Hi, good evening everybody. The Apostolic uh, Faith Mission in Mauritius welcome you tonight. Oh, we just wait as you pop in. Hallelujah. We praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God for this day. We praise you. We hail you. Yes. Uh, so as you pop in, please uh, let us know from which country you are coming. You are watching us live. From uh, we are from Mauritius. It's then it's the eight p.m. here. So let us know from which country you are watching, so that we can pray for your uh, country, pray for you and your family also. Hallelujah. So we we give glory to God. Uh, good evening, Brother Gilbert. Welcome you. Yes, uh, we welcome you. Fine, Brother Gilbert. We are fine. Trust everything is going well uh, in your work and everything, in your business. Yes, Sister Joyce, welcome you. Good evening. Yes, so hallelujah. So once again, uh, the Apostolic Faith Mission uh, welcome you tonight. And it's Monday, it's our English uh, uh, session. And as you have seen in the post, uh, uh, the title of the of tonight's message is Walking Temples, Walking Temples. So we just wait uh, for some minutes, uh, uh, let the others uh, pop in. And then we begin in prayer. Hallelujah. So trust uh, you are well. All of you are well. Thank you. Uh, just let me know if the sound and image is okay. You are listening well. And the image is fine. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, we welcome you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so we just uh, mostly, it's 8 fog. Yes, Brother Joe, welcome you. Good evening, Brother Joe. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, I think uh, I think we can begin. It's already eight, uh, uh, mostly eight four. It's eight four. Sister Sanashi, yes. Uh, good evening. Welcome you tonight. And uh, hallelujah. So once again, uh, the Apostolic Faith Mission in Mauritius. We welcome you. As you have seen in the post. Uh, uh, the title of the message tonight is Walking Temples, Walking Temples. So let's uh, bow our head and we pray. We place this meeting into the hands of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you, we bless your name, Lord. Thank you for the privilege you are giving each one of us to come before your thrones of grace. Lord, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you all you have you 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 have done for us during this day, and we want to thank you tonight. Oh Lord, forgive us if we have offended someone uh, by our action or in our thoughts. Lord, so thank you, thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Say so God, uh, you know the purpose. We are here. We place this meeting into your hand, and. Uh, Everything begins with you and ends with you because you are the Alpha and Omega. So, Lord, we place this meeting into your hand. We welcome you, Jesus. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Take your place, Lord, that you prepare your children's heart to receive a word for you from you, a word of healing, a word of deliverance. Oh, yes, Lord, because your word says, where there is the Spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. Yes, Lord, today, tonight it's not a man will speak, but you, my spirit and your spirit, be one. And uh, you can use me mightily to transmit your message, but all the glory goes to you, Lord. 
thank you. In Jesus' name we say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, the brother Vishan from uh, Durban, uh, Sakastral. Am I right? Eh? Hallelujah. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Sister Jacqueline also is here. Brother, brother, hallelujah. Jason, Sister Natalie, God bless you. Okay, let's begin. Let's open our Bible first. So the title of the message is Walking Temples. Huh? Walking Temples. So let's open our Bible in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse. The, we are going to read from verse 16 to 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So the Word of God says, uh, Good evening, Brother Cyril. Nice meeting you tonight. God bless you. Stay connected uh, to the end. Okay, the Word of God says, don't you know that you yourselves are God's temples and that God's Spirit dwells in your midst? If anyone, if anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred and you together are that temple. And then in, uh, always in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20 the word of god says do you not know that your bodies are temples of the holy spirit who is in you whom you have received from god you are not your own you were bought at a price therefore honor god with your bodies so we are going to talk tonight of our bodies who is the temple of God and the Holy Spirit reside in us. So what the word of God says, do you not know that you are God's temples and that God's spirit dwells in you? Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. So, my friend, brothers and sisters, one of the most elementary principles of Christian thought and life is expressed in these words. You are not your own. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Glorify God, therefore, in your body. Amen? So the sense here, the sense of divine ownership rather than self-ownership is the spirit of all Christian dignity and strength. I remember, hey, good evening, Sister Lala from Madagascar. Thank you. God bless you, Sister. Long time. So I remember when I was in Durban, South Africa, I, I had the privilege to dedicate a new church building for God's glory. Several hundreds of people participated in the service. Majority of them were non-Christians. The neighborhood residents were extremely delighted to see a church in their own area. It, so so it, was an, it was an exciting time as we, as we were gathered to dedicate the new church building and set aside for God's glory. And yet, uh, I, tried, I tried to see the, 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 the opportunity uh, to point out what believers well knew, that a church is not a mere building, but is people. A church is not the building, is people. And though the building was very beautiful, useful, and essential in the carrying out of the plan that God has given, 
it was not what our Lord had in mind when he said in Matthew chapter 16 verse 18, in Matthew chapter 16 verse 18, the word of God says, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew chapter 16 verse 18. Jesus our Lord of course mean to the people and the remarkable things about the church is that it is growing and and living organi organism made up of people whom Peter calls living stones. You will see it in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5. Peter called it the church a living stones. But let us go a bit to see the word uh, uh, living stone. The Greek word ecclesia. The, wo the Greek word ecclesia which is translated throughout the New Testament as church. Right? The Greek word here is Ecclesia, uh, which means the church. Here refers, what it is the church refers, that is Ecclesia, refers to a gathering of people, not a building, my friend. Right? It should be very clear in the beginning before we enter very deep into the walking temples. So first, uh, the church in the New Testament refers to a gathering of people, not a building. Amen? So the church, the church is that universal mystical body made up of every person who has trusted Jesus Christ by faith and has been born into the family of God. Amen? Can I hear an amen here? Hallelujah! So you and me, all of us, born again Christian, we, who, those who trust by faith Jesus Christ, who believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, we are the church. So our body as the Bible, as the, my text in the beginning, in my introduction, uh, I, have, I have told you that the, the uh, the Bible says that uh, our bodies are the temple of God. Amen? So, the question we ask, why do people, why do people highly regard and esteem church? Why do they try their best to be good and not to do any wrong when they are in the church? If we not if, no one speaks bad words or smokes or gambles or gets uh, drunk in church. Why? Why? The obvious reason is because people believe that church is a holy place, is a sacred place, is a holy place. So when we go in the, in, in, in the Old uh, 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 Testament, in the Old Dispensation of the Law, the tabernacle and later the temple were given over entirely to God for His holy use. Amen? Hallelujah. Are you with me tonight? Hallelujah. So they were called holy because they were separated and used for his purpose and glory alone, glory to God. It was used specifically to, 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 to glorify God, to worship God. It, it symbolized the house of God on the earth. So the idea, the idea of the old temple was not that of the modern church which is a building in which uh, men may gather to worship God. Amen? The old temple was a shrine for deity to dwell in. And this divine presence in the central shrine 
was conceived as hallowing the entire temple buildings right through to the outer courts and gates. So, if Christ, if Christ dwells in our hearts by faith, if our souls know his divine presence, then all the forces and powers of our body are consecrated and ought to be allowed. Our whole life, our whole life in its narrower and its, in its wider circles of relationship must be thoughts of us certified, treated as pure, made and kept ever clean, ever holy, holy, holy. So according to the New Testament, in Acts chapter 17 verse 24, in Acts chapter uh, 17 verse 24, it says, hallelujah, Acts chapter 17 verse 24, it says, the God who made the world and uh, everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And then again, in John chapter 2 verse 19, John chapter 2 verse 19, G Jesus told the religious leaders, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. Amen? Amen? In John chapter 2 verse 19, Jesus, Jesus told the religious leaders, destroy this uh, temple and I will raise it again in three days. So this is our Lord's answer to the Jewish request for a sign which should warrant his action in cleansing the temple. Amen? Hallelujah! So, again in, 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 in those who are taking notes, so what you need, you need a Bible, you need your Bible and then you need, thank you Brother Gilbert from I Am Computers who is assisting me tonight, always, always, not only tonight, always assisting me by giving you all these verses. So you can read, but at least, please, you need a pen and a notebook to take notes. Amen. So again, in John chapter 2, verse 21, tell us that Jesus was referring to his body. Right? In John chapter 2, verse 21, it is clear that Jesus was referring to his body. Christ's body was like the temple as it regards those religious services which were perf performed in it. Amen? In the temple, in the temple was a standing oracle. In Christ, humanity dwell the true and living oracle of heaven. Amen? In the temple was the altar of sacrifice and the atonement for sin. Those who have studied the tabernacles, you know it. So both derive their efficacy from him who his own self bore our sins. Amen? So the temple was the house of prayer. It should be very clear. The temple here was the house of prayer. However, Compared with Christ's body, the temple at Jerusalem, in, uh, in all its glory, beauty uh, and service was but a meager structure. Brothers and sisters, my friends, we must ever be on the alert to see realities and not let our eyes be deceived by mere appearances. Though, though they killed Jesus, they, they destroyed the real temple, 
by nailing him on the cross. But he resurrected on the third day. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise God. As he is resurrected, Christ, Jesus Christ, is a temple for all the nations. Are you with me tonight? Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is a temple for all the nation. In him, in him God dwells, accessible to all, you and me, the humanity, anywhere, irrespective of sacred times and places. So therefore, every Christian, every Christian with Jesus in their heart is a temple of the living God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is why. This is why Apostle Paul taught us, you are the temple of God in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. He says, you are the temple of God. So, now the reason he can say that is because we have been redeemed by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen? Because, because of redemption and, resurrect and resurrection, the Holy Spirit has taken up residence in the redeemed. It is in your body and my body. Hallelujah. So Paul wrote to the Christian in Corinth the following words. Let's open our Bible in uh, 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 for, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, we are going to see verse 16 and 17. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. He says, Don't you know that you yourself are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him, for God's temple is sacred, is holy, and you are that temple. It means you and me, my brother and sister. Hallelujah. So this is this this is this is one. This is one of the most uh, wonderful pictures given in the scriptures depicting our relationship with God. So that comes to my title tonight. We are his walking temples. You and me. We are Jesus' church. We are his walking temples. Whatever we put us, whatever he will go, whatever we are, we are going, whatever we shall stay, we are Jesus' walking temples. It's about, it's about opening the door of our hearts and letting God do His work inside of us. Very simple. Just open your, the gate of your heart. Just open the door of our hearts. And let God do His work inside of us. Amen? My brothers and sisters, Christianity does not happen only in church. As many people think. Christianity is whatever Christians are, because whatever Christians are, they are the temple of God. Amen? Hallelujah! So we are Christian not only on Sunday. We are Christian every day. We are Christian every day, not only church, not only in the church, not only on Sunday, but every day we are Christian. First, and, and another thing, let me define what is Christianity. Christianity is a relationship with our Lord Jesus. It's not a religion, it's not a denomination, it's a, re it's a relationship between me and my Savior Jesus. So some people try to be holy only during the Holy Week and uh, on special holidays and live away from God throughout the rest of the year. 
This is not the Christianity that the Bible talks about. Rather, true holiness or a lifestyle. In other words, that's how Christians live every day. Why Paul, why Apostle Paul is trying to tell us is that our body is the dwelling place of Almighty God? Paul further said, you are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. That means God must be the one who is in control of what we do with our bodies. If your body is the temple of God, my friend, that you must treat your body with care and respect. Hallelujah. You stay holy and uh, healthy and you don't do anything that will jeopardize that. The word temple is a word that was used for the holy of holies in the Jewish temple. The holy of holies was a holy place, was a sacred place in the inner most part of the temple where the Ark of the Covenant Arrested. The Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of God. It was in the Holy of Holies where only the High Priest of Israel was allowed to go once a year on the Day of Atonement. What he's going to do over there? Just to offer a sacrifice for the people. There was a curtain that separated all of humanity from the holy of holies. There was a veil, there was a curtain. But when Jesus, listen to me now, when Jesus breathed his last breath on the cross, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, signifying that you and I now have access to God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Can I hear an amen here? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I, 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 want, you to, I want you to interact with me. I don't want you to just listen, but please, an amen here. Hallelujah. We, we, can, we can enter now. There is no curtain because of the shedding the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. In fact, in fact, the writer of Hebrews calls Jesus the veil or the curtain through which we enter the presence of God. So now, because of us having been baptized by the Holy Spirit, we have made peace with God and have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. That is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the same Spirit who was with Jesus, the same Spirit is living in you and me. Hallelujah. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, my friend. In the Old Testament, the Lord God had a temple for His people. I want you to understand this. In the Old Testament, the Lord God had a temple for His people. However, in the New Testament, He has His people as a temple. You and me, God have him, have us as his temple. So there are several comparisons between our bodies and the original temple of God. There are many, many comparisons. The first thing, number one, those who are taking notes, put number one. Number one, the first things that would come to our mind when he's speaking of a temple is that 
it is the place where God's presence is. It is the place, number one, it is the place where God's presence is. It is the most marvelous reality of the Christian life, I can say. The Jewish temple was also a place where the God was pleased in a more immediate manner to, to, to reside. When Solomon, when Solomon first dedicated it, we are told the house was filled with a cloud so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord has filled the house. The glory of the Lord has filled the house. The earthly temple was, was a place of consecration. The earthly temple was a place of consecration. Nothing that defiled was allowed on the grounds. Right? In the New Testament, from the moment a person believed, on Christ as his Savior, the Spirit of God dwells in, in him. In Romans chapter 8, verse 9, that is, as, the, as you confess Jesus Christ, as you believe Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you, you believe that Jesus died for you on the cross for your sins, you repent, you turn, you make an act, you repent. Then, immediately, your body becomes the temple of God. And God, His Spirit comes into you. And God deposits His spiritual gifts in you. That's very important. The, one who, the, the, the Christian who is not a, he is not a born Christian, he will not receive the spiritual gifts. If you are born from your mother's home, you have talents, but not a spiritual gift. The day you make a choice, who Jesus says in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and life. So when you, you, when you make that decision between death and life, you choose life. You choose, Jesus said, I am the life. So when you have you surrendered everything, your body becomes the temple of God. You are born again. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17, you become a new creature and all your sins have already been washed by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's continue. The indwelling Holy Spirit, a living person, a divine presence is God's means of reconciling the world and to himself. That's what I said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17. God has given you and me the ministry of reconciliation. Right? So it means that you are a living person. The Holy Spirit dwells in you. You are a divine presence on this planet earth. Hallelujah. Jesus said also in Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. Uh, uh, Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart. For they will see God. Blessed are the pure in heart. Pure in heart. For they will see God. Purity, my friend, comes as the result of the act of consecration. Consecrated things are deemed pure and to be used for holy purposes only, for sacred purposes only. One of the best, uh, one of the best ways to use our bodies is to consecrate or dedicate it for the service of God. This is one thing. I repeat again, my friend, you, those who are listening to me tonight, it's a privilege tonight. I, I say again, one of the best ways to use our bodies is to consecrate 
or dedicated for the service of God. Number two. Second, the temple was placed where men gathered to pray, worship, and listen to God's word. I repeat again, the temple was a, pla was a place where men gathered to pray, worship, and listen to God's word. The Jewish temple was a house of prayer. Right? My house, say the great God, shall be called a house of prayer. And implies that the hearts of true believers are the seeds of prayer. Right? Our heart should be the seeds of prayer. People came to the temple and glorify the Lord. It was a place where songs were, were, where songs were sung, prayers were prayed, praise was rendered, word of God was proclaimed, and God was magnified. You will see it in Isaiah chapter 56 verse 7. We open the Bible in Isaiah chapter 56, uh, 56 verse 7. You will see that it was a place where songs were sung, prayers were prayed, praise was rendered, word of God was proclaimed. So just as, just as the temple was devoted to God as a place of worship, our bodies are to be places where God is worshipped. Right? I say again, similar to the temple, which was devoted to God as a place of worship. Now, in the New Testament, I say now, our bodies, you and me, our bodies are to be places where God is worshipped. So how can we worship God with our body? Right? That's, a, that's another question. How can we worship God with our bodies? In Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. The Bible also tells us to offer our bodies to God as living sacrifices. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Put it very clearly that we have to offer our bodies to God as living sacrifices sacrifices hallelujah so my friend the believer must yield his or her whole life without any reserve to god amen our bodies are sacred temples or holy temples holy unto the lord amen god has claimed by means of redemption our bodies and what he claimed for his holy purpose, we must yield to him. Right? This is why Paul said in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, Apostle Paul said, But I say, but I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. Amen? But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number three, the third. Third, the temple was a place where men carried out the duty they had been given by the Lord. Right? I say again, number three, those who are taking note. Third, the temple was a place, hallelujah, where men carried out the duty they had been given to the Lord. Given by the Lord, sorry. It was a place where duties were performed. Duty is what one ought to do. Its root meaning is to owe or what is due. Right? 
Life itself, my friend, is a privilege offered by the Creator God. Therefore, therefore, it is one's debt to live their life to glorify God. You know, my friend, I tell you one thing. You all know my testimony. When I was in the death row, you know how God, how our Lord Jesus revealed himself to me and took me out from this death row. And today, after 35 years, I owe God my life. I owe him. So that's why I'm doing everything to serve him only. So for me, a day, a new day tomorrow and today is a privilege that God has offered me to serve him, to glorify him, to praise him, to worship him. Duty deals with heart motives and purpose for living. I repeat again, duty deals with heart motives and purpose for living, which determines one's reason for certain kinds of conduct. Duty includes the responsibility to discover personal assets, that is, your talents, abilities, skills. Utilize them and continuously improve for God, self, family, and society. All of you, you have skills, you are, you are very talented, you have spiritual gifts, you have abilities. So my friend, make an assessment tonight. Think. What I'm telling you tonight, think about this. Use all the things continuously to improve for God, for yourself, for your family, and your community and the society. And why not the nation? Because you have been called for the nations. Not only me, you also. So duty determines virtues and vice versa. Commitments. Commitments demonstrates character. I repeat, commitments demonstrate character. Genuine character is shown as goodness, uprightness, integrity, honesty, and morality. I speak, I, I, I repeat again, genuine character is shown as goodness, uprightness, integrity, honesty, and morality. To answer the question, <coughs> sorry, why duty? It is necessary to consider the alternatives to or the opposites of duty to consider a society and life where duty is disregarded or rejected. The obvious result is selfishness, self-centeredness, rebellion, chaos, anarchy. The Christian conduct is a growth process of becoming Christ-like by imitating him, our Lord Jesus. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter here. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, the word of God says, Fear God. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. I repeat what the Bible is telling us tonight. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Are you being blessed tonight? Hallelujah. Can I continue? Again in Ephesians chapter 6, <clears throat> in Ephesians chapter 6, the word of God tells us every job, tells us every job, every occupation, every work falls within a believer's sacred duty. Right? Chapter 6, Ephesians put it very clearly that every job, every occupation, every work falls within a believer's sacred duty. So there is no such thing as a secular job for a Christian. There is no such thing as a secular anything because everything is to be done to the glory of God. If we are Christians, we also will seek to carry out our duty to our fellow man as revealed in the word of God. In Matthew chapter 25 verse 34, Matthew chapter 25 verse 34, Jesus speaks of those, Jesus speaks of those to whom he, sh he shall say, Come, ye blessed of my Father. He said, Come, you are blessed of my Father. And then, and, and, and them to whom he shall say, Depart. For one he will say, Come, you are blessed of my Father. For some he will say, Depart. It is all based upon their action. Right? So, my friend, brothers and sisters, these people, they didn't feed the hungry, cloth the naked, visit the sick and minister to those in prison and others in need in your community perhaps. We ought, we ought to feed the hungry. We ought to cross the naked. We ought to visit the sick in the hospital or whatever. We ought to take a message of salvation and cheer to those in prison. Even you can't go there, at least you can write a letter to someone who you, whom you know who is in jail. You tell him about your testimony. Give him about your testimony. Remember what Jesus told you, told all of us. You will be my witness. So what are you doing to take a pen and a piece of paper? Just write, if you know someone in prison, write a letter. Tell him about Jesus. Speak about Jesus and tell him that Jesus is the only way, the truth and life. My friend, tonight, a life could be touched. A life could be changed like me. After 35, people have written me letters and letters of encouragement, giving me books, even has paid my uh, uh, degree uh, 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 at the Assembly of God. I remember uh, one lady, one lady, one retired lady had, uh, had uh, 82 years. He, her children sent her money, but he will, he will keep this money to pay for my, for my lesson, for, for the module. And that's how. I got my degree, my brothers and sisters, and today if I am here, the, I, I thank God, I thank God that after my relief, I got the opportunity to go to visit her, even uh, uh, at, her, at her funeral also, and, and that's great, that's great, we praise God that she is in heaven with our, our, our Lord and she is rejoicing and I'm here to give you testimony to encourage you I say your body is the temple of God your hands, your mouth, your ear everything is to do His will we are His servant so God would have us 
take it into them, my friend. So, my friend, I say again, feed the hungry, clothe the naked. I know you have got many, many clothes in your cupboard. Empty it. When you empty it, God will refill it, will fill it with you. Hallelujah. You, we, ought to, we ought to give a message of salvation to the prison service and those who have done wrong. Talk about them. Pray for them. Pray before. And then you open your mouth to speak and the Holy Spirit will do the rest for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If we do not God does not say we shall hear, come ye, ye blessed of my father. Rather we shall be among the cursed because our lives are not bearing out what we claim in our profession. Hallelujah. So we are to carry out, we are to carry out the responsibilities we have been given by God. You and me has already been, you and me has been, God, has been caught by God. God created you and me for a specific purpose. So rather we shall be among the curse because our lives are not bearing out what we claim in our profession. We are to carry out my brothers and sisters, you and me, we, are, we have to carry out the responsibilities we have been given by God. There are many areas where we are duty bound before the Lord. Amen? In witnessing, in worship, in prayer, in tithing, in obedience, in holiness, in righteousness, and in thousands of other ways, we are duty bound before God. Amen? In other words, in your job, you are serving the Lord. Whether my brother Joe, you are cooking, you are serving the Lord, you are feeding people. Whether you are a teacher, you are teaching, this is our new generation, you are serving Lord with your attitude and your effort. Amen? Hallelujah. Number four. Fourth, the old temple in Jerusalem was the scene of many sacrifices on the altars in obedience to God's commands. Hallelujah. Every time any, anyone went to the temple, they were immediately confronted with a death and life sin. In each human body, the seed of death is implanted. The law of mortality is at work. A, a threefold death has befallen man. The body dies. Everlasting death is threatened. And spiritual death is inflicted. This is threefold. The body dies, everlasting death is threatened, and his spiritual death is inflicted. The highest life of man is a daily dying to all that is mean, false, evil, unspiritual, and wicked. I repeat again. The highest life of man is a, day, is, a, is a daily dying, daily dying to all that is mean false, evil, unspiritual, and wicked. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31, 
1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 31, Apostle Paul felt this when he said, Apostle Paul felt this when he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 31, he says, I face death every day. Yes. You say, I face death every day. Yes. Just as surely I, as I boast about you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. So every part of our body is undergoing a process of disintegration and renovation, constantly throwing off all effect matter and constantly receiving deposit of new and living matter. Amen? We must die while we live in order that we may live when we die. Hallelujah! Thank you. So according to the Bible, we have been born again. According to the Bible, we have been born again in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23 says, As a result, we are totally new creation. I want you to understand this. It should be very clear in your mind because the devil is very cunning. He will play because the battle is in your thoughts. He will bring all your old things, all your old fantasy into your thoughts. So you have to stop it. Say, devil, in the name of Jesus, the Bible says, I am a new creature. All the sin has already been passed, washed by the blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus. I want you to understand that. Right? Therefore, we are expected to be dead to our old way of life and to the way of life held so dear by the world system. Col Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 9, you, you can read it because the time is, is going now. I don't, want you to take, I don't want to take more than one hour with you. So in these verses, we are told to put off, to stop it, or consider ourselves dead to certain activities. Among them are fornication, uncleanness, evil desires and passions, covetousness and lying, and so on. So if you do not, if you do not control your body and its passions, it will control you, my friend. Right? To die, to die once is a lot appointed for all. To die daily is a duty practiced, a blessing obtained by wise people because the day is evil, they put it, from, they put it far from them. And finally, when men saw the temple standing there in Jerusalem, they reminded of the powerful name and glory of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 2. Paul is telling us that everywhere we turn, everywhere we go, we are living, breathing love letters to humanity. We are the love letters of Jesus Christ to the humanity. We bring the gospel. We bring the good news. We bring love letters to the humanity. Letters that, they, that say to sinners what God has done in our life. We may be the only sermon some people ever see. So how are we treating the house of God, my friend? Are you totally dedicated to the Lord Jesus? Are we using our body to worship Him in dedication and devotion? Are we fully executing our duties before the Lord? How we put those things to death in our life that dishonor of Him? Is our life a pleasing display of God's glory? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Think about this. 
Are you pleasing God? Think about this, my friend. I want to leave you with this tonight because it's time. I trust that you have been blessed. I pray tonight for all of you that have listened to this message that you are the holy temple of God. In you now the Holy Spirit dwells in you. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus tonight for my brothers and sisters who have listened to your word. Your word. Nothing from me, God. Nothing from me. That Holy Spirit, you give my brothers and sisters inspiration, revelation. Show them the way, things that are hidden in their heart. Bring your light. Bring them into light so that they can confess it. Brother, I take your precious blood, Jesus, that you shed on the, on the cross for all of us. I apply it from the head to the truth and I cancel all the plan of the enemy in the life. So let's praise the Lord. Let's worship Him. Glorify Him. Thank you, my brothers and sisters, for watching. God bless you. And before I leave, remember now, in Mauritius now, our borders will be open. You can order, you can order the book, which was launched in November, from pit to pulpit. From pit to pulpit. You can buy it online, just inbox me. Please, please, inbox me. Buy, buy the book. Bless someone. Yeah, I know you will be blessed. You can send it into prison. You can bless someone. You can raise this. Will this is a book? Is my testimony from the death row to pulpit. So please, it, you can pay. You can order also through PayPal. Or please inbox me, and we shall tell you from which country you are. And we shall tell you the cost. So God bless you. And those Mauritius, if you are in Polwi, that is, this is free delivery in the, in the region of Polwi. So please inbox me. We shall post it for you. You can use it to MCB. Just, 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 uh, just inbox me. And the book is available at 350 rupees. Hallelujah. Plus the cost of the postage. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Good night. See you on. Wednesday. Amen in Creole. God bless you.